difference. Today we're transforming this to this, and I'm telling you whether you're into BMX or not, these builds, these are the cheapest, simplest, easiest, and possibly most fun ways to learn how to start putting bikes together. Builds like these can be your foundation for bigger stuff, bigger stuff. This show is called Tinker Tuesday, and it's brought to you by Park Tour. I hope you're still here so that I can plead my case. What we have here is a We The People curse frame that would have came from a complete bike. It's full chromo tubing, which is what you want. Here's what's really cool though. The BMX industry seemingly all has agreed on a lot of things with their frames, like sticking right around the four to four and a half inch head tube lengths, 25 four seat posts, press fit BBs, integrated headsets, the list goes on. What that means is the vast majority of parts come out of the box and bolt directly on with no need for like cutting or messing about. They all just fit properly. There's no real need for specialty tools here. You can put one of these together fully with a hammer, a set of Allen keys and a socket set. And because BMX is kind of a niche with younger riders, especially ones with really bad sticker ideas who want to get their first cars, you can buy their good condition used bits for like super cheap. Like how I got this unabused frame for 50 bucks. And all I need to do to make it look not so stupid is heat gun on these stickers. Boom! I think, um, I don't know, that might have been 15-ish minutes worth of work because paper stickers are super annoying. But uh, yeah, what a huge difference, even with all the glue residue from the stickers left over. I'm gonna take this inside for a second. I'm gonna go to like the, the basement laundry sink with some goo gone, get all of this off. But instantly this thing looks like it's worth more. And uh, I mean, obviously looks a lot better. So without a doubt, the most daunting and possibly the most annoying task to do when putting together a BMX is putting the bottom bracket in. Most of them are press fit, so the appropriate tool for it, uh, depending on what you have, is either a proper press or a hammer. Now, for the next bearings that are so easy, headset bearings, I'm using a Merit headset. All BMXs, pretty much all BMXs, any decent one anyway, will use an integrated headset, which means no pressing in of cups, um, no real, no real anything. Just throw a little bit of grease in here, it's in. This actually has the crown race integrated as well. So again, no tools, super, super easy. The bottom bearing goes in, a little grease in the lower. Grease is a good thing. I used to never put grease on my BMX stuff, which was stupid. This is very quickly coming together. Within like 10 minutes, this will be a riding bike. Because a lot of frames have converged to that four to four and a half inch head tube length, it's kind of allowed BMX forks to simply manufacture with steer tube lengths that work without needing any cutting. Installing stems and forks this way is super easy because all the guesswork is removed. And then whatever sort of handlebar height you're trying to achieve, you can just do it with different rise bars or different rise stems. Cranks can be a little bit annoying sometimes with different length spindles and different diameter spindles, but it's nowhere near as bad as other bike builds. Wheels on the other hand, super easy. You just need to decide whether you want a free coaster or a cassette. On this bike, I'm going with my Merit free coaster wheel set. Now I've been at this for 15 minutes, including shooting this video. The bike is almost done. And I'm planning on using this build strictly as a street machine, so I'm not putting brakes on it. All that's left is just stickers, and then it's done.
Sorry about that. In my head, that uh, last segment was gonna turn out a lot better. Anyway, as always, with our 2023 series of Tinker Tuesday, we have a complete project here from the frame to a complete working bike that, might I add, works very nice and is indeed the most straightforward, easy to put together bike there is. Though, I'm realizing I forgot to say you should also own a chain breaker, so I hope you're still here to get that edit. You should also own a chain breaker. Now, I know what you're thinking, brakeless fixed gear. That's, that's an equivalently easy bike to put together. And I'll give you, it's a close second, but still no contest, BMX, easier to put together. See, so if you got yourself a fixed gear frame, you still have to worry about steer tube length, so you're gonna have to cut that and install a star nut. These are already threaded, the top caps go with the fork, too easy, don't have to do anything, no extra tools required. Also, every fixed gear frame is gonna have a threaded bottom bracket, which means some sort of special tool depending on what crank and bottom bracket you go with. And with that said, balance bikes. That brings us to the end of this iteration of Tinker Tuesday. As always, you can support this show specifically with super thanks. I take those super thanks comments, there's the button down below, and I put them here for everyone to see. You may not realize it, but one contribution through super thanks actually like doubles, sometimes triples the revenue of a video, making sure this content keeps being made. So thank you so much for supporting the channel that way. And then lastly, because this is a show about working on bikes, you're gonna need tools. Go to the link below to check out Park Tool. It'll bring you to the Jensen USA Park Tool page. Anything that you need for your forever tools, you should get it through there. It helps contribute to this channel through affiliate links, but also it makes sure that uh, it makes sense for Park Tool to be supporting the cycling content creators that they do. What else can I say? Nothing.